Oh, <laughs> hi friends. Mr. Matt here. You, you caught me. I was just going over a recipe for what I'm going to have for dinner tonight, making sure I had all the ingredients that I needed and looking at the steps I need to follow to make that recipe. I'm really looking forward to it because this is a recipe I've had before, but I just need to remember what goes into it. And that's the nice thing about a recipe is it tells you the steps that you need to do to make what you're trying to make. But that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about our Jesus story today. And we're talking about Jesus and the feeding of the 5,000. And it is such a miraculous story. It's easy to get caught up in all the details. I mean, just think about it. Jesus is there and he's teaching the people and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are coming and they're listening to Jesus and they're taking in his words and they're there for a while and people are starting to get hungry. And the disciples come up to Jesus and they try to tell him, look, it's time to stop teaching for us. These guys are really getting hungry and we don't really have anything to feed them. And Jesus stops and he says, well, what do we have? And I said, well, we just have a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. We don't really have enough at all for these thousands of people. And then Jesus thinks about it and he says, well, bring me what we have. So they bring Jesus the few loaves of bread and the few fish that they have. And then Jesus blesses it and he he gives a quick prayer over it and then he takes the basket back and he gives it to the disciples and said, okay, take the food out and start giving it to the people. And as we learn in the story, all of the people get fed and not only do they get fed just a little bit, they get fed until they're full. Everyone is, is stuffed with the food that they've had. And when it's all said and done, there are even leftovers that are gathered up. Hmm, maybe there's something there for us. See, Jesus sort of is giving us a recipe too. If we look at what Jesus does in this story, he gives us a little scorecard, a little some steps to follow to do some pretty important things. Let's take a look at it. The first step in being confronted with this challenge of how do we feed thousands and thousands of people? The first thing that Jesus does is he gathers up the few things that he has and he lifts them up to God and he prays over them and he blesses them. In that first step, that step of praying Jesus starts the recipe. He starts the process, not by trying to do something just for himself, but by trying to take something and lift it up to God and say, God, this is what we have. Make it do what it needs to do. That prayer is the first step in that recipe. Now, the second step in the recipe is one that doesn't get written down in the story, but it's really important. After Jesus prays, then he simply believes and trusts that God's going to do great things with it, that God is going to take care of it. Jesus doesn't take the basket and look in it and start counting what's in the basket now. He just takes the basket and passes it to the disciples. Jesus trusts and believes that God is going to take care of the situation. He's going to take care of Jesus. He's going to take care of the people. And Jesus lets God and makes room for God to do God's work. Then the final step of this recipe is to actually do the work. After he gives the baskets to the disciples, he says, go ahead, take this, go feed the people. And they do, they get to work and they go through the crowd and they are sharing the bread and the fish with everyone who wants some. It's an interesting recipe that Jesus gives to pray, 
to trust and believe and then to get to work. And I think that's something that we should remember too. See, the job of loving God and loving God's people sometimes is very big and it's very daunting. That means it's a real challenge to try to figure out what you're going to do. How are you going to do it? But the Jesus recipe we see in the, this miraculous feeding is one that can teach us. When we're confronted with that big challenge, first, pray. Talk to God about it. Let God know what you need. Let God know what you're hoping for. Listen for what God's trying to tell you. It's a great first step. Second step, trust and believe that God is going to take care of you and God is going to help you in the situation that you're in, in the way that is best for you and for other people. It may not always be in the way that you expect or the way that you want, but God has a way of making sure it's the best thing for you. And finally, after we've prayed and we've put our trust and our faith in God, then the last thing is just get to work, just start. It doesn't matter what you're going to bring to the table. It doesn't matter what you have to offer. It might be a small amount, like a few loaves and fishes. It might be enormous wealth. I don't know what you're going to be able to bring to the table. But I do know that whatever you have to bring, that third important step is just go do it. Don't wait around. Don't wait till everything is just right because the best time to start loving God and loving God's people is right now. So pray to God, trust and believe that God has going to take care of it. And then just get to work, just go out and love God and love others. If you do that, you're on your way to doing some big miracles in the world as well. All right. That's all we have time for today. It's time for me to get into the kitchen and start prepping for dinner. But until we're back together again, I hope you remember how much God loves you, how much your parish family loves you, and how much I love you too. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.